Offensive coordinator Scott Satter or Marcus Satterfield has a mega task going forward. Uh, now four season ending injuries on the offense, uh, with the latest being wide receiver Marcus Washington, running backs Ramir Johnson and Gabe Bourbon Jr., then earlier in the year, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda, then the start fall camp, tight end Arik Gilbert and wide receiver Xavier Betts left the program. You have six high level frontline players that are no longer with this offensive unit that started with the unit when fall camp started in August. Oh, it is really, I mean, this is, a, oh my God, the only bad thing about this, Sean, is we're starting with a bummer. We're starting with a bummer. Because if you put all those guys on this offense, it it wouldn't like look like Ohio State, don't get me wrong, but it'd look pretty good. It, it, it would. It'd be one of the better ones in the West, maybe. For, yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I don't know if that's like saying you're the best ice fisherman in Florida right now, but... <laughs> Um, it's, it's still an accomplishment. It's kind of like that. <laughs> um, but you would, I'll tell you one thing, even sitting at one and two with what Nebraska's got left, you would feel like, oh, they got a shot. So it's really, really unfortunate. Now, the other thing it does is it, I, I don't mind saying it, it's kind of weird, but it alleviates pressure on Marcus Satterfield. You can't, you can't go. I mean, I, you know, here I go, the, biggest coach apologist in america but you can't go hard at satterfield now i mean what do you do he's just got to every week piece together something and hope maybe you can get to 24 points well then I mean, even the jeff sims heiner carberg i mean i don't think anybody could have predicted that heiner carberg would be the starter um and no way and yeah, I think it's a debate. No is he the starter because Sims is hurt, or is he the starter now because he's better than Sims? Well, and Rule this week sort of said that that could have easily been Chuba, you know, when, when Sims went down, but Chuba was hurt. At you know, Colorado. Ch yeah, Chuba was still getting back from an injury. So, yeah, in a sense, you would say that Heinrich Harburg fell into this, but he's, you know, he's taken advantage of it. Um, he's, he's rough around the edges in the passing game. But he's a great runner. He's their best runner. Gives them the best chance. It's so, kind of, you use the Purdy analogy. It's kind of like Brock Purdy in San Francisco. And nobody expected him to be the quarterback for the Niners. He beat out Garoppolo, Trey Lance, a number of pretty good players. And he's the guy. And, and not saying Harburg's like no. Brock Purdy by no. any means, but I don't think a year ago when we were doing these shows, we would have said Heinrich Harburg would be three and one as a starter. Oh my God. You I, you would have said I would have said Sean you're crazy they they like you've you've said it a lot they weren't even including him in meetings they Logan Smothers had a better chance a year ago to be three and one as a starter right now than Heiner Carver yeah it's and and we've covered this but it's a really actually a really good story what's happening right now um, it would be a better story if he was a little more polished as a passer but he's I mean. Three and one's three and one with a great opportunity, Sean, to go four and one. But back to Satterfield, I don't know. I think about what he's think about just what we heard this week. If you just look at the running back position, where he, as you mentioned, he's lost two guys. They're, they're two best guys, Gabe Irvin and Ramir Johnson, and then their third best guy, as 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 it wasn't a depth chart anyway, clearly has an issue right now, a big enough issue that. Matt Rule spoke at length about it during his Tuesday press conference about Anthony Grant struggling to hold on to the ball. So that's the picture. At running back after Grant, it's a redshirt freshman, Emmett Johnson, who's a, who's a good kid. I always feel like I feel like I'm I, people take it that I'm being critical of him. I'm not. He's a he, but he's a redshirt freshman. He's undersized. Okay, in in the Big Ten, and then you have Fleeks. I don't know, Sean. It might be Fleeks ahead of Emmett Johnson. It's hard to read, but that's what, and Fleeks is a just just came over from receiver. That's what you got. Well, and they might need Fleeks at receiver just as much as they need him at running back right now. <laughs> Somebody asked us that this week on Husker Online. You know what? Could Fleeks go back to receiver? And I mean, it, it's a it's a fair question. Well, it is a fair question, except that I think they need him more at running. Back. Yeah. See that, or both. Maybe he could do and think both. About it, he was suspended for fall camp. For, for a few days because yeah, he showed up overweight so you know there, there's yeah the offensive situation um and the and the o line is still the o line i mean they're they're not by i mean what is the best thing they can do right now heiner carber can create with his legs <laughs> right and 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 coach rule has alluded to the fact he's a little beat up he also 
it's very peculiar to me, but Rule has said it a couple times that he gets fatigued. <laughs> I mean, they're asking a lot of him, but he's in good shape. I mean, I don't look at Heinrich and go, "Oh man, he's kind of he's kind of puffy." No, he's not. He's he's a he's a well conditioned athlete, but he gets tired apparently. It's a lot of weight to run that fast with. It is that's true, and it, there's a lot of what I would be concerned about and maybe these guys don't think like this maybe i'm being a soft you know sign of the times type thing here um sensitive steve <laughs> sensitive the mental fatigue i wonder about you know i mean he's got to carry he's got to carry a lot heinrich he's got i mean they're going to lean on him a lot Sean, if they're going to beat a good team he's probably got to run for close to 100 and throw for close to 200 Right. What I like, though, about Harburg is he understands what it means to play for Nebraska, to be a Nebraska quarterback. And it's important to him at a high level. And, oh, yeah. That's I mean, true. and his dad well, played here. He well, grew up. He grew up here. And so, like, there's just this sense of obligation when he's out there and importance. And I'm not saying other quarterbacks didn't feel that way to an extent, but it's more with him. You can oh, just yeah. feel it. And Oh, yeah. I told no, Sean, I 100 percent agree with that. And I, I, that's part of the reason I'm drawn to him. I just, he just has a lot to deal with, as does Satterfield. So you got to piece it together somehow. And at receiver, which we haven't even talked about, which is fine. I mean, you're going to now, now it's Kemp, it's Alex Bullock, and, and freshman. Then, and then you've got to get some something out of those freshmen. And we're talking about, about Malachi Coleman and, and Jalen Lloyd and Jaden Doss. And I think of those three, you'll start to see Doss. You'll start to see Doss move into the forefront. I hope this week with the three practices they had, they really got him going more. Yeah, I bet they did. I bet. They I mean, did. Coleman, they've played now more than four games. Mm -hmm. Doss is or um, Lloyd's at four. Mm -hmm. um, so like those two guys, I think all three of those guys will play more than four because they're going to have to by necessity, and it's not ideal. Uh, but you would like to see Coleman's production increase too i mean he's got one catch and you know he played 50 some snaps that one week and uh -huh. so is he not getting open and not throwing him the ball i mean uh -huh. is he just learning um we know the abilities there with malachi coleman yeah you hope that and i like him i and i think i mean the re there's a reason why i know i talk more glowingly about Jaden dawes but there's a reason why those guys are are with the varsity we'll say you know just put it that way they're with the bar there's a reason They've distinguished themselves throughout the weeks of practice and and shown the coaches that they can help. Now you want you want to see it carry into the game for sure. I mean, Coleman is the kind of guy that can take a Malachi's the kind of guy that can take a slant and go the route. You just like to see it. I know? do like that they're going to be home the next two weeks. That helps. With young receivers, it's more comfortable setting oh, for these guys. One hundred percent, Sean. And, and, I, and I, I'm not thinking that Michigan State in early November is going to be like I mean, as far as road atmospheres, <laughs> well, it'll be a really tough. I mean, it'll be a it. crowd that's going to be shifted towards hockey season and basketball season there. Well, and the Lions are playing really well. Yeah, they so, are. so I um, that trip will be really tough. Um, but yeah, these guys, I always say about freshmen, there's a lot they deal with. Everything is happening for the first time. You know, they're kind of away from home for the first time. They're they're going to, you know, they'll be going to East Lansing for the first time. It just there's a lot of first and it's there's a lot to work through. So I'm not being hard on them. But what you hope, though, Sean, is they take ownership and say, God, you know, if we're going to have the kind of season we want, it's, on, you know, it's a lot on us now, guys.